Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be covering the installation of MariaDB. So the first question you should ask yourself is why would I bother to install MariaDB as opposed to the inbuilt SQL Lite DB that provides all the functionality that I need? Well, yes, you're right. You don't need MariaDB. However, if you do install MariaDB, then you will gain performance increases. In addition, MariaDB is more reliable than the internal Home Assistant SQLite database. So the added advantages of better performance and more reliability make it a should do, but not a must do. Just a note, if you're running on a Raspberry Pi with a micro SD, then this installation is not recommended as it puts an additional load onto your storage and your micro SD will wear out quicker. If you want to run MariaDB, then you should be running on an SSD. Also, as we are changing your reporting database, you will lose history. So if you're running integrations such as present simulation, then you will need it to build this sensor history back up again for it to work properly. This is a replacement for the internal Home Assistant database and not a migration. If you want to retain your Home Assistant history information, then you're recommended to stay with your pre-installed Home Assistant SQLite database as there is no way easily to migrate your SQLite database to MariaDB. So let's dive on in. So the installation process is pretty simple, but we'll step you through the process. So as at the time of recording, I'm running on Home Assistant 2023.10.3. Now let's navigate to Settings, Add-ons, open the add-on store, and search for Maria DB. Select and install. Once installed, turn on the watchdog, as you'll need Maria DB to be available all the time. Now go into the configuration and set a strong password. You can leave the remainder as default. Now press save. Go back into the information and press start. Maria DB will now have started as signified by the green dot. Go into the log files, scroll to the bottom, you should see I see that it's successfully started. Now we need to make an update to the configuration.yaml file. So we'll need a file editor. I'd suggest that you use Studio Code Server for this. I've created a video on how to install Studio Code Server available in the pop-up above or in the descriptions below. If you don't have this installed, then go and do it now and come back to this video. Now let's go ahead and make our changes to the configuration.yaml file. First, Go into the add-on and then into the documentation. Scroll down to the bottom and copy the lines of code underneath the Home Assistant configuration. Now let's go across into Studio Code Server. Select your configuration.yaml file, scroll down to the bottom and paste your line in. Once you've pasted the code, remember to change the password before the at with a password that you set in the installation of the add-on. Now move to the developer tools and to the YAML in the top menu. Now press the check configuration and make sure that Home Assistant reports that the configuration will not prevent Home Assistant from starting and then restart. Confirm the restart and again. Once Home Assistant has fully started, we can check that the Maria database has installed and is working. Go to the left hand navigation and select the history. Now this is a test environment. I'll select an entity that is connected, such as my Sonos. You can see the history only goes back a few minutes as to when the Maria database was installed and Home Assistant restarted. Now, if you are happy that the process has been successful and that you will not be heading back to the internal Home Assistant SQLite database, then you can delete your old SQLite database. This step is totally optional and you can skip it if you want. The simplest way to do this is to use a file editor, strangely enough called file editor. Now I don't have an installation guide for file editor as I prefer to use Studio Code Server, but let's quickly do that. Head across into settings, add-ons, add-on store and select file editor. Press the install button and wait for it to install. Now turn on the watchdog as this will restart it if it crashes for whatever reason. Also tick the show in sidebar. Now we can start it. Once started, it'll show a green dot in the top right hand corner. 
Now head into File Editor, press the Browse File System, and scroll down. You will see something that says home assistant underscore v2.db. This is the SQLite Home Assistant database. To delete it, press the three dots to the right of it. Press Delete and Confirm. If for whatever reason you want to stop using the Maria database and want to revert back to the Home Assistant internal SQLite database, then you simply need to remove the code that we inserted into the configuration.yaml file. To do that, Studio Code Server, select your configuration.yaml file and remove this section of code that we inserted. Once removed, make sure that you restart Home Assistant. Since we deleted the database, if you, once you've restarted, Home Assistant will recreate that file if it cannot find the database. And there you have it. You've moved across to using the Maria database, a faster and more reliable database, all the benefits without any of the drawbacks. Now, I did find some references on how to migrate a SQLite database across to a Maria database. Links in the description below. I've not tried this approach as I don't have a requirement to migrate and I was happy to rebuild my history. However, you might like to try the migration and if you do then please let us know in the comments below on how you went. I've seen other comments on other YouTube channels about where the database is stored. Now I assume that you want to use this information so that you can back it up or maybe interrogate the database. Either way, you can do this by using an add-on called PHP My Admin. This is a far more advanced feature and beyond the scope of this video. But if you are a sysadmin and want to tinker with the database, then this is the best way to run all your SQL commands directly onto the database. So I hope you enjoyed the video and are now running the MariaDB and enjoying the blisteringly quick access, assured in the fact that your the reliability of the database is now much improved. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see similar content to this, consider subscribing to the channel and dinging that bell. That way you'll be notified when new content becomes available. Also, if you have any specific topics that you'd like covered, then please leave a comment and I'll try and add them to the production schedule. So until the next one.